Hi there, welcome to my bokeh background technique video. Today I'll be showing you how to create a bokeh background using three soft green pastels and two pan pastels, one white and one flesh tone. The paper I'll be using today is Clairefontaine Pastel Matte, but this technique also works on other makes of pastel paper. This technique can be adjusted to suit your needs. Just choose three pastels of your chosen colour, light, medium and dark complementary shades in place of the greens I'll be using, and a sheet of pastel paper of your choice. This can be Mine Taints, Clairefontaine Pastel Mat, a sanded paper, or even Velour Pastel Paper. They all work suitably well for this technique. Moving on. So first of all, we can start with the, the lightest green. And we do this by just applying random patterns across the paper. When I say patterns, I don't mean a repeating pattern, just random markings across the paper. Now the reason I say to use three shades of green is it provides extra depth. If you use just two, say a medium and a light, it just wouldn't create enough depth. So by using a dark, a light and a, and a medium, you just get that added hit to the painting and added depth. So just keep applying randomly. Don't fill the whole page. Leave space for your medium and your dark to go on. And try and think about something else when, you, when you're doing this so you, you're not uh, making patterns. Next we're going on with the medium green. Now the reason I said to use complementary shades is that if one of your greens is a warm green, then all three need to be warm green. It's wherever they fall on the colour wheel. I'll talk about that in more in depth in another video. You could use cool greens that were more lent towards the blue shade, but these, these greens are definitely a warm green, so these lean towards a yellow. So we're going on with a medium green, not filling in all the space, just popping in and out in between where the, the lights are. You can cover up a little bit of the light, blend the two together. But the idea is we're going to fill the whole page with the light, the medium and the dark first and then we're going to start blending them. Not blending them all in completely, else you'll lose the contrast, but blending the edges. These technique videos are short videos as opposed to the workshop videos that, are, that I'm going to be producing and that I already have produced. These technique videos I like to think of an addition to the workshop videos. Whereas the workshop videos are teaching you a technique within a workshop environment that you can then take and utilise in your own work, these are just like little glimpses into a certain technique. They concentrate on a certain small technique out of one of the bigger videos. Some of these techniques might be just one-offs. I'm going to be doing one on sharpening pencils, so that will just be a one-off. But that's the whole idea, that's the difference between the longer workshop videos and these shorter technique videos. So what you've just seen there is a soft tool, and I'll pop them in the description below. And it's a tool predominantly made for blending the pan pastel pastels. Pan pastels are a very, very soft pastel and you purchase them in a little tub and they, they are so soft that they're easily blended with these sponge tools. Now the best idea about these or the best thing about these soft tools they come in different shapes and different sizes um, and the little soft foam part at the end is removable and replaceable but you can also wash them so if they get too too dirty you can First of all, turn them over so the side that's facing us would then be facing down and use that side. And then when you've used both sides, they, they can just go into the washing machine. And once fully dried, you can use them again. And you can just keep doing that, rinsing them off 
uh, drying them off and reusing them until they wear out and obviously they're going to wear out faster on a sanded paper as opposed to a more smooth pastel paper. This is Claire Fontaine pastel matte paper and um, it's not as rough as the sanded paper but it's not as smooth as the Canson paper but the soft tools are doing a really good job on this paper so I'm really happy and the pan pastels are beautiful to work with. Okay so we've blended very lightly the dark, medium and light greens together but not completely because we did want to keep some contrast just so the paper is all now covered with a very light layer. Claire Fontaine paper is very good because it does keep the vibrancy of the pastels which is lovely. Next we're going to utilise a unison dark pastel. So we've already been on with the light, medium and dark and now we're going on with the dark again. But we're taking care not to cover up all the work we've already done. We're just randomly dotting a little bit more dark just to give it an added sense of depth. Now if you want your background to look further away from you, you could try adding a cooler shade, purple, blues, lilacs, they all make your background look further away. If you were doing a painting where you wanted a blurred foreground, then you could add warm shades to the blurred foreground, such as oranges, yellows, reds, and this actually pulls the foreground towards you. It makes you believe that the foreground is nearer to you than it actually is. So if you were creating a whole painting, you could have a blurred out background using cooler tones in the background, then your subject in the middle, and then a blurred foreground using warmer tones. And that way you get a lot of depth into the painting as a whole. Okay, I'm using the soft tool and you can actually see here that I'm actually building up the layers by using a circular motion. It's creating the look that you would get when using um, a depth of field focusing method in a camera where you're focusing on a subject but you want the background behind the subject or the foreground in front of the subject to remain out of focus. So the only thing that would be in focus would be the actual subject itself, so a bird or a squirrel or a flower maybe. You can also use this technique in photography and still life. This technique can be used in different mediums, airbrushing for instance, acrylics, oils, and I'll be talking about that in different videos as I work with that medium in future videos. At the moment I just want to get a nice range of pastel videos out there for you and then I'll start working on videos in coloured pencil, airbrushing, acrylics, oils, inks, graphite and anything else that you can think of. If you'd like me to make um, a video of a particular subject or technique or medium just leave me a message in the comments below and I'll put that on my to-do list. I'm hoping now to get more videos out to you. Um, my goal at the moment is at least one a fortnight. So that, that's, that's the goal I've set myself. Now I'm getting more used to the editing and the voiceovers and the whole techie side of things. Okay, back to the video. I'm now going on with the flesh tone, the pan pastel flesh tone and I'm putting on some highlights, still going round and round in circles, working from the middle outwards. It leaves a little tiny dimple effect of, of light colour in the middle. And that's good, that, that is what I wanted to create. That's what you see when you're using this method in photography. So that's working correctly for me. So start in the middle and work out, push the pastel out towards the outer edges. Again, randomly placed highlights. Don't try and space things out too uniformly, if that's a real word. Um, don't have 12 of these spaced out across the page. It would just look too formal. You could have a cluster in one area and then maybe two or three dotted elsewhere. That would work. But just try and keep them random. Now I've gone on with the white and it doesn't matter if the soft tool, the sponge, it has got green on it, that's fine because it's going to blend in with the colours anyway. 
it, the colours are going to blend in with the greens once they go onto the paper so that's fine you don't need to use a new tool if the tool gets too dirty and you want to go to a, a, a colour that's a lot lighter then just wipe the soft tool off on an old t-shirt an old piece of cloth a piece of kitchen roll something like that or it's normally on my apron or my leg so that cleans it up well enough for any particular subject like this so again randomly place these highlights and overlap them so you could overlap them with some of the background circles and you can overlap these white circles with some of the flesh tone circles that have already been created I just want to take um, a quick moment just to say thank you a huge thank you to my subscribers so far you I love you all it's just so exciting to see my subscriber numbers growing um, I just want to thank each and every one of you it's amazing your encouraging words and encouraging comments are just mind-blowing it's brilliant thank you very much it's really encouraged me to carry on making videos and I want to bring lots more for you in the future bring value to to my subscribers yes brilliant uh, that's out of the way <laughs> Um, if you haven't subscribed already then please do if you like what you see I'll put some um, pop-up cards on which relate to other videos that I've done where the, I've used um, an out of focus background um, I'm also just editing a video about white fur and that's a giant panda with an out of focus background so once that's been edited and the voice over has been added then that'll be the next one to go live. This video was time to go live at the same time as the black fur and pastel. That's the black panther one. It's actually a, a black leopard, but people call them black panthers. So there you have it. A quick and easy way of creating an out of focus background with pastel. You could do this if you were using pastel pencil for your main subject and you just wanted to speed up the process of putting in a background. Well that's over and out from me, thank you so much for joining me for this short technique video, I'll see you all soon, please subscribe if you haven't already and for those of you that have, a huge thank you, take care, thank you, bye bye.